You can see me now. Uh, you can see the slides now. Fantastic. Sorry, guys, for uh, for the mess up here. Awesome. So I was saying, my name is Lloyd Lobo. I'm the co-founder of Boast AI. We uh, a platform that fintech platform that help companies identify, claim, and finance government incentives. We built and grew the company on a predominantly community-led growth model, and I'm here to talk all about that. Um, we bootstrapped the company to eight figures in revenue before raising a Series A last December. Prior to that, I was in product and growth and on the founding team of a number of venture-backed companies that had failed. You raise a lot of money um, and you try to hyper-grow and you know you, you make a lot of mistakes along the way. I've, I've subscribed to the fundamental belief that if you don't have product market fit or uh, you, sh you should grow very capital efficiently, and those were learnings where we raised money before we had product market fit, or um, we raised money and did a bunch of wrong action actions, and we failed. You know, the other thing is uh, the, this founder of HP often had a very famous quote that said, "More companies die of indigestion than starvation." Right. So it's like uh, I think as founders, one thing you can do really well. Uh, will help you succeed is focus. Focus will sort of help you nail the message on how you get your customers and everything you do. And all of those learnings were from not having focus, right? So um, you don't have product market fit and you chase all kinds of channels um, and you fail or you have product market fit and then you try to add all kinds of channels and then you you start failing. And so one of the key real realizations from my learnings were that Focus is uh, is a big thing. And at Boast, we focused on one kind of customer coming through one kind of channel, which is mostly community, and getting one kind of product or service. We grow to eight figures uh, based on that, and now we're expanding from there. Awesome. So this is our community. I'm not sure if, uh, if you guys have seen. Our community is called Traction. Um, there's different kinds of communities, right? There's a community around your product, but there is an audience community as well. So our mission at Boast is to help innovators become successful and change the world. Every dollar spent in innovation returns 20 to the economy, from vaccines to robots to clean drinking water. We enable that by helping innovators get government funding, non-dilutive funding from the government through incentives and tax credits. But we found that innovators need more than just tax credits to become successful. We're founders and innovators ourselves. And, uh, and so we started doing pizza nights, which evolved into meetups, which evolved into conference, which evolved into webinars. And now today we've got 110,000 plus subscribers. And every major CEO from like Twilio to Uber's old CEO has been to our events. And we built a community on audience and not particularly our product. We created an audience community because, because the landscape was very large, uh, right? Like our product, I think more people know of traction than know of Boast AI, but the, the whole idea there was, um, was if you don't have a massive audience yet for your product, then you should uh, you should create an audience community versus a product community. And then then the sort of, product community can follow later. Product community is really people gathering around your product and, and learning from each other on how to utilize your product and best practice around your product. But I think if you wanna create a category and build something bigger, the audience community matters a lot more in the early days. And uh, I think if we didn't have this audience community, uh, we wouldn't be where we are today. And a big part of this is we also partnered with a nonprofit called Launch Academy to, to, to build this audience community traction. And all the, all the profits from, from our events get donated, right? So the, the positive thing about it is we built this community. It's all funded by sponsorships and ticket sales, making it uh, cost neutral. The word of mouth has generated huge brand value and leads for us. And ultimately, all the profits get donated. We never paid for any speakers, any of that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chat about how we did a lot of this. And if you have any questions, um, please type them in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the session chat here. Awesome. So, you know, 
our fundamental philosophy when we started the company was fall in love with your customer and make them select make them successful beyond your product or service if you build a community you won't become a commodity so one of the big things is especially if you're trying to create a new market um i'll give you a perfect example is gainsight they were in a new market right customer success didn't exist gainsight built this audience community customer success they started hosting events conferences writing tutorials playbooks around how to become how, how to drive customer success how to drive customer retention how to engage your customers and then also around how to become a great customer success professional so gainsight did a fantastic job there another company that did a very very fantastic job there what a hubspot right hubspot before they even had a product they were building a community they called it inbound marketing the conference is called inbound it's an audience community and then within that now that they've scaled significantly over the last 10 years they have a product community within it but the whole theme was fall in love with your customer and make them successful beyond your product or service and so if you if you recall hubspot when they started they started promoting a lot of content and resources around inbound marketing like how to become a great digital marketer i'm an engineer and i didn't know anything about marketing and the first company i joined in in product i needed to learn a lot about marketing i was a startup i had to flex um i had to flex product marketing i had to flex digital marketing seo <coughs> and everything i knew back then in the in the uh, mid 2000s i learned because of hubspot's inbound marketing programs and all of their content and so that theme of fall in love with your customer and make them successful beyond your product and or service is key i've seen it like gainsight hubspot atlassian they're all started with these communities and then the product evolved from there you know uh, running this massive community of 110,000 people we come i get asked questions like this a lot right everyone's looking for a sil silver bullet what is the next growth hack what is the next thing we should invest in like hotmail got 18 12 million users in 18 months by you know adding get free hotmail a free email at hotmail in in the signature or airbnb jump started growth with craigslist i think the flavor of the year this year is community led growth every board meeting everyone is talking about oh you should build a community you should build a community you know don't do anything that's unnatural for your business to build a community one of the founders or leaders in the company need to have a dna of giving without expecting anything in return you have to have this mentality of if you help enough people get what they want you will get what you want community takes a long time to build and the roi is not immediate right so when we started the community we started doing pizza nights in different cities and those pizza nights started growing like every time we do these pizza nights more and more people would start coming to them and so eventually we did a conference and that first conference we did we had a partner and that, at that time the community was in called traction it was called something else he ran off with a quarter million bucks of the profits from the community and we we were like this doesn't even make money um and it was massively stressful then um uh, we we end up having a lawsuit we and and we end up getting the assets back and then and then we partnered with a non-profit to grow this build and grow this community and we rebranded to traction but what i'm saying is it took a long time to build that community and there was an immediate payback our sales guys would always complain that oh you know what there's no one to one tie between sales and so that's the whole thing right your goal for a community is to help people get what they want and become successful it's not self serving if you're self serving and trying to tie everything to roi and leads uh, it's going to fall apart and that's why hubspot called their community inbound they didn't call it the hubspot community now then many many years later um once inbound had grown and they felt they had educated the market on how to become successful inbound marketers then they started the hubspot community around their product the hugs community so i always say start with your audience community especially if you're in a new market or you're in a fragment fragmented market um the same thing with gainsight they knew that customer success was a new community so they created an audience community how to become uh better at customer success how to become a better customer success professional and and how um to deliver 
customer happiness is how they came about. And that came out of customer support. Before Gainsight and before customer success as a community, customer success was traditionally customer support, right? Everyone talked about reactive. And so when you say customer support, it's a, it's, it's a reactive word. You're reacting to customers' complaints. With customer success, you're actually being proactive and you're checking in regularly and you're, you're staying on top of the customers along the way. And they created a huge audience community for it. Now Gainsight has their own product community as well, but it all starts with creating the audience. But before you even do that, I think the most important thing to realize is don't look for a silver bullet just because Boast is doing a community, Gainsight is doing a community, HubSpot's doing a community doesn't mean you should be doing a community. First, you need to figure out is that in your DNA to do? Is that something you can deliver a lot of resources uh, or dedicate resources to? Because it takes time uh, and it, it, it likely won't return in year one. Awesome. So again, folks, if you have any questions, keep them coming. I don't know how to keep the uh, sort of uh, chat above the screen share. So we'll take your questions at the end. Um, and, and this ties to my, my comment here around don't do something just because others are doing. Elon Musk has this very popular quote, which I love. It says, don't reason with analogy just because it works for somebody else doesn't mean it'll work for you. Boil things down to the purest fundamental truths and reason up from there. And so you know, the definition of success, although it seems very simple, is you know, uh, one kind of customer coming through one channel channel getting one kind of value right engagement plus revenue plus growth equals success but you know um in most companies you're not ready to grow there's a time where you're not ready to grow you're not ready to grow if you don't have an ideal customer meaning people don't come to your product or service to get a specific job done and you have poor retention meaning people don't keep coming back to your product or service anytime they want to get that job done, right? So if you have one and two, you are at product market fit and you should invest in growth. But the thing with community is you really don't have to have product growth or product market fit before you start building the community. We launched, we, we incorporated Boast.ai in 2017, but we had building the community for a long time before that, right? Gainsight, before they even had a product, they had the community. Upspot, before they even had the product, they were doing inbound marketing. And so like community can help you build strong relationships. Uh, one of the key things you need to do before product market fit is validate the market, right? Um, and, get, and get feedback. And building a community can help you do these things. How do you build relationships, validate the market, become a thought leader in a certain topic, right? get feedback, and then really create a movement around it. And a lot of what has happened is Gainsight has created a movement around customer success. Now, it's not this, their movement. As a company, you have a mission. And if you serve that mission, that's your company's mission. But it becomes a movement when different companies now start attaching to that same thing. Gainsight is like, we're going we're gonna to enable customer success people uh, to deliver su customer uh, successful customer outcomes, right? Now, Gainsight's not only the not the only company with that mission, and there are several companies popped up in the customer success space, and and now there are several customer success events and and communities and uh, and conferences and playbooks out there. HubSpot, the same thing. They did inbound marketing, right? And now today, HubSpot's not the only marketing automation company. There are several. There are several conferences around growth and marketing. And so when everyone attaches to that same mission, it becomes a movement and you create a category. Because ultimately, if the category is only you, right, then it's not really a category. It's only you. It's a movement and it's a category when there's multiple people who attach to it. So with us, our focus is innovative companies, innovators. We want to help innovators change the world. And that's why we started Traction to help them get uh, traction on their innovation so they can grow fast and accelerate uh, innovation. And so we host a lot of events. We host uh, two webinars a week, monthly dinners in different cities, which is paused. We host uh, quarterly uh, founder funder matchmaking events and meetups. And then we do a number of mini conferences and a massive conference. It all started from doing sort of pizza nights. But the thing is, I'm not the only one with that mission. Boast is not the only one with the mission to enable innovators to become successful, right? Startup Grind has a similar mission and others do. And when everyone does, then you sort of, you know, your, your, that mission turns into a movement. Um, I'm going to pause and be
I. Can you guys hear me okay? I don't know. I'm having like massive technical difficulty. <laughs> Sorry about that. So Nick, Nick asks, is this in your DNA too? Is such a good question because honestly, you shouldn't do things that are a chore for you, right? Can can everyone hear me, by the way? Awesome. Yeah. So I ask that question a lot because the thing is, life and business is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And relationships transcend companies, right? It's not meant to be uh, like if you're doing anything transaction, if you optimize for the transaction, if you treat people like a transaction on the way in, they're going to treat your, you like a transaction on the way out, right? And that is uh, that is the fundamental thing is like, how do you, how do, how do you effectively uh, focus on things that you like? And so your DNA matters a lot. If your DNA is about giving and enabling people to become successful, then you will build a big company, you'll build a community. If your DNA is not about like helping and enabling people, then it'll be a chore. And what happens when it's a chore? When, what happens when you treat things like a transaction? The first time things are shaky uh, or, or you hit a calamity, your legs get shaky. The second time, the third time when there's something major, you leave and the community falls apart. How many times you've seen companies that do one blog post or a few webinars and then it stops? It's because you're not passionate about it, right? Ultimately, you need to be passionate about something and it needs to be in your DNA to be successful at it. And the worst thing is you do community because it's flavor of the month, right? Um, and that's that's how that's how I look at it. Awesome, um, great stuff. So the community-led growth model we talked about here, like you know, uh, audience community versus product community. But ultimately, the model here is community is in the center and it drives everything. It drives product feedback. It drives customer success, support, marketing, sales. It all comes together. Like building a community-led organization is literally starting, starting from this, right? Fall in love with your customer, make them successful beyond your product or service. That is, that is the heart of a community-led organization. And so oftentimes people will ask us, why are you doing traction? Like, like, why are you doing all this content that, you know, helps people build better products or people fundraise? Like, what is the point? Why don't you just run uh, run uh, webinars and do content just on getting government funding because that's your product? But government funding is one of the resources that innovators need to become successful. But what they actually need is a whole landscape of resources to become successful. And it starts from there, right? If you help your community, your customers get what they want, you will get what you want. And it's been it's been a massive, massive driver for our growth and enabling us to bootstrap, even hiring. We hired our CMO recently who comes from four exits and one IPO directly from the community. Our CTO, um, who comes from a 13 billion public company, was a direct referral from somebody from the community. So those things matter, like the social proof of people and the collective good and the karma w drives your business. But in the first couple years, the one-to-one -one isn't there. Right. So I often tell people, it's like, where do you start then? Where do you where do you start with all of this? Where, how do you get going? And so the first thing I say is effectively set aggressive goals, set very aggressive goals. And, and that may be I want to get 10,000 subscribers in six months or I want to get like 100 people engaged. Start small. Like, I mean, set an aggressive goal, but start small and then do better week over week over week over week. So we wanted to get uh, 10,000 subscribers within the first year. I put six months, but within the first year. And last year, actually, when COVID hit, uh, Noah Kagan, the founder of AppSumo, he challenged us to grow to 100,000 subscribers. And then you start doing actions and working backwards from it. And he said, can you get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year? And we got to 97, but every action we did was working backwards from that aggressive goal. If you don't have an aggressive goal, you can't work backwards. Have an aggressive goal, start small, and then start doing actions to, to grow th that week over week and do a little better because a little improvement daily compounds and, and turns into something massive. Um, this I talked about in the beginning is like start serving one audience exceptionally well with one product or service. So this could be like, you know, you have your company, you have a product or service, but you may have an idea for, for something, right? And that something could be, I want to host an event or I want to do a Slack group or whatever it is, but like pick one audience, one kind of customer, 
um, getting one kind of value coming through one kind of channel, right? So you pick this customer, like who are they? What are the key outcomes they're looking for? What are they looking to get? Like, you know, what makes them successful in life? Like, what are they looking to learn? And then you start there. Once you have that ideal customer profile and you understand where they eat, breathe, drink, and sleep, then you can start doing activity for them. So when we started, it's not like not, today when I talk to people, they say, oh, you know what? Everyone's saying build a community. We should build a community. Should we start a Slack group? And I'm like, no, that's the wrong approach. There's a billion Slack groups out there, maybe billions and exaggeration, but there's thousands of Slack groups out there. The ultimate thing you want is engagement between members or engagement with your brand or engagement with the content, with one of those things. Start somewhere and just focus on getting that engagement going. If you don't have that engagement going, then you will stop. For us, it was around events. And, and uh, we started doing these pizza nights uh, monthly. Then it turned into like every other week. And then it turned into a conference. And what we found is that every time people came together in person, um, some magic happened. People always call me and say like, hey, I met my investor or I met uh, a co-founder or I met a key hire or I met somebody from the press at your conference. And, and that mattered. So the other belief I have is anytime you incorporate more than two uh, uh, senses into an engagement experience, you build genuine relationships. So right now we're on sound and we're on sight. And, and I'm already getting uncomfortable because this is unlike Zoom because I can only see my slides. I can't see anyone. I can't see the chatter. So now all I'm seeing is like my slides and not anyone else. And, and, and the sound is one way. But anytime you add multiple senses, you build a genuine connection, right? So imagine now I was giving a talk and we were in a room together and, and there's food and um, there's uh, there's drinks and and you guys can we can see each other and I can see the audience reaction that makes it even more engaging. So anytime you can incorporate more than two senses and right now we're on sound and we're on sight. But if you can incorporate like taste, touch, smell, you start building better experiences. And so we focused on rather than doing Slack or rather than doing a Facebook group and all of that, we started doing events. We started doing a lot of events. And this year, we'll have done 100 events. Now, what happened was because of COVID last year, um, we took everything online. And so we started doing two webinars a week. Again, there has to be consistency. You got to keep doing it. And, um, now, and, and because of doing two webinars a week and bringing these great speakers, the audience started growing. The audience started growing. audience started growing. And, and we're like 110,000 plus subscribers. But ultimately, pick one thing and do it really well. If events is your jam, like I love doing events. So it was easy for me. Again, like when I talk about like, if it's, it should be a part of your DNA. If it's in your DNA, it won't become a chore. And it's very important that these things don't become, um, uh, it's very, very important that these things don't become a chore, right? If you treat things like a transaction on the way in, it's going to be a transaction on the way out. If you're really passionate about it, so I love hosting events. I actually planned my whole wedding and I'm a brown guy. So you know how massive Indian weddings are. So I planned my entire wedding. There were like 400 people. I did everything. My, my wife was in medical school doing residency at the time. So she really couldn't do anything. And so I planned it very meticulously. So I said, okay, what are my skills? What is part of my DNA? What is something that I love doing? It's events, right? And um, I love building relationships and so let's build community. And we started hosting these events, bringing people together, connecting people. And that's how the community grew. Now, like over time, it's like you, you pick one of these things. If you're a bootstrap company or if you're a company with very little resources, the hub is your community in the center. Pick one. You, if you try to do everything at once, like I said, more people die of indigestion than starvation. And so you will be unsuccessful. Like if you try to build, build, build an ambassador program, well, what's the worst? You build an ambassador program and it falls flat, right? So pick one that works really well for you. And maybe it's like a blog or maybe it's it's building a sort of a, a masterclass program or it's building like a, a mastermind group for people who congregate regularly. It, it, we started really small. In the, in the early days, there were like 10, 20 people showing up and then it grew from there. Um, just pick one thing. If it's content, if it's if it's regular newsletter, if it's a podcast people would engage with, 
or it's a Slack group, pick one thing and do it really well. If you try to do many things and you fail, you will definitely not be successful, right? But if you if you nail one thing, then you can expand. Like we started with these meetups. Those meetups turned into mini conferences and turned into a big conference. Now then it's turned into a webinar and podcast. Um, soon we're going to have ambassadors in different cities. But like we nailed one thing really well and then we're expanding. Um, the goal is not to have FOMO and do everything listed here, is to do one thing and then expand to the next thing and the next thing, ultimately with the goal that can you enable your community to become successful beyond your product or service. Um, this I talk a lot. I take a lot of principles of community building from product building. I think users should get to an aha moment right away, meaning they should get value from the first interaction. So when we host events, for example, um, we focus on food and experiences a lot because most people that go to events, they get sandwich or pizza. Uh, and so we focus on like, what are some unique experiences where people come and they are like, get wowed right away, right? So um, one of my friends uh, and, and uh, my co-host for the traction is um, uh, his family does weddings or, or rather they caterers for weddings. So we have all kinds of Indian food and live cooking at the, at the event. And we got a lot of great feedback that we never went to an event where the food was so good. So that's the kind of thing, right? Focus on the experience. And it's similar to a product. If you have a self-serve product, you want people to get to an aha moment right away. They meet some famous speaker or they get value immediately or, you know, the, the food experience is good. The networking is good. Focus on, on building that, like get them to an aha moment right away. Uh, one thing I like, I mean, I'm not a believer in club, Clubhouse and I didn't sign up for a long time and I personally end up canceling it anyway. But when I signed up for Clubhouse, the aha moment was as soon as I joined, uh, they did a very, very good job on the aha moment. As soon as I joined, I got clubbed together in a room with four or five people um, who I didn't think knew each other. They're all friends of mine, but one person was in Saudi Arabia and one person was in India and one person was in San Francisco. And they were all welcoming me into the product. And I'm like, wow, what is this? How do you guys know each other? And they don't. Uh, Clubhouse just brought them together to welcome me. So that was an aha experience. Um, so just whatever you do, whether it's I'm doing a Slack group or for a community, or you're doing a podcast or a content, or you're doing an event, you got to start somewhere. Whatever you start, make sure when people join, they have a great experience. Um, and, and because when they have that great experience, they'll tell five other people and five other people. Like when we started doing these pizza nights, we would figure out what is the content that people want to hear. And we'd bring a speaker on that. We'd have good pizza uh, and, uh, and people would come in and they would feel like, wow, right? We created a, a very, very good experience there. So ultimately, that's what matters. Like the first thing you do, you should do really well and then do it very consistently, Right. And, and I talked about this in the other slide. Peter Steele says this is if you if you do one thing really well, you have a great business. If you don't nail one and try 100 things, um, you're going to fail. So it's think really hard about nailing one channel. And I say one thing. The one thing is like you want to build a community and, and you want to start with events, nail events, love events, do it really well. Or you want to start a Facebook group or a Slack group do it really well. And that means like if you start a Facebook or, or Slack group, make sure you have guidelines or people are not spamming with links. You're putting thoughtful content and resources, right? Ultimately it ties to what is your customer or what is the end ICP, ideal customer profile, looking to learn and level up, right? Um, they start with a sort of, uh, there's, this, there's this great slide on becoming super Mario from Mario. I don't have it, uh, I'll, I'll send it later, but it's like, it's your community and they're, they're, they're this small, your community is in the center and then it enables them to become a better version of themselves. Ultimately, your product, your community, you know, people talk about product-led growth, this year community-led growth is, is the flavor of the month. Um, ultimately, your community should enable the, the members or the people to become better versions of themselves, right? Uh, the, la the, the fifth thing here is involve your people, like focus on people in the community and give them opportunities to in involve and engage and, and grow them into ambassadors, right? Ship them stuff, things like that. We're starting to do a lot of this in the next two quarters where we're going to get multiple people from the community hosting meetups and stuff in their cities and then enabling them with sponsorships and resources uh, to become successful. So involve your people, identify 
the best people in your community or the most engaged people and give them the opportunity to become rock stars, give them the stage. Because you know you can't hog the whole limelight yourself. So if somebody is an expert, like identify those experts and give them the stage, give them the limelight. Everyone wants to be recognized. Everyone wants to feel like a celebrity, give them the opportunity. And if you find those ambassadors and enable them, your community only go, grows. Ultimately, you know, there, there's, you, I ask people often this, what, if you could pick one of three, what would it be? Uh, power or slash control, money or impact. If you focus on control, you'll die alone and you'll never build anything of significance if you just care about control. If you care about money, it's great because you'll make good decisions, but a lot of the times it's short-lived. But if you care about impact, the world will cry with you and the world will laugh with you. And, and impact is one of the biggest traits you need. The focus and the desire to create impact is one of the biggest things you need to build a community. And so then you make the pie bigger and more and more and more people uh, become involved. Like we could have hogged the community ourselves, but we partnered with Launch Academy, for example. They're a nonprofit and you know our community has just grown doing that. So ultimately involve your people, involve the people in the community and give them the stage so they can benefit and be recognized from it too. The last thing is, um, or or um, the last thing is, make your community sticky here. So, meaning the more you engage, the more engaging it gets, or the more content you produce, the more you were to lose if you were to leave. So we do these two webinars a week, and it's uh, it's it's great because people keep showing up, right? You do it at eleven a.m. every Tuesday, every Thursday. And every time we host events, more and more, more and more people uh, show up, kind of thing. Um, I'm going to skip this, and I talk about showing up um, consistently. And one of the most important things with building community: if you commit to doing something, show up consistently. If you don't show up, you will never build a successful community. So I'll give you an example. We used to host events every other month, every month, something like that. Last year, during the pandemic, we took everything online. And we committed to hosting two webinars a week. We have consistently hosted two webinars a week, a live webinars a week for more than a year and a lineup is booked through the end of the year. Because of those two webinars a week and the consistency, we've added 50,000 or so subscribers. I had COVID in January and I was hospitalized, but we made sure we found other resources to run uh, th those live events and do the interviews and do the sessions. So ultimately, if you don't show up, you can't, if, if you're not passionate about it, you won't show up. And showing up is also a key part of building a community. Um, so, so, you know, in, in sequence here is one, pick, pick an aggressive goal, figure out your audience really well, where they eat, breathe, drink, and sleep. Pick one experience for them and nail it with that one experience. Involve your community as you grow and, and give them the opportunity to become rock stars. If you enable them to become rock stars, they will corral people around them and enable your <laughs> your community to become a rock star and reward them. Reward them for uh, for championing your cause. Um, make your community sticky. And, and by sticky, I mean uh, producing good, relevant things. And things are either it's events, it's content, it's podcasts, it's meetups, it is masterminds, whatever it is. Just make it sticky where people feel like if they leave, they would have a lot to lose. And then the last thing is show up very consistently. Um, ultimately, if you fall in love with your customer and make them successful beyond your product or service, if you build a community, you won't become a commodity.